Hi folks, this video is about the augmentation principle. Augmentation is a thing we do to arguments. So when we take an argument with some premises and a conclusion, like consider this argument here, all humans are mortal, Socrates is human, therefore Socrates is mortal. If we take that argument and add more premises to it, but we leave all the rest intact, then that's called augmenting the argument. So when you do augmentation, you can't delete any premises. We're not replacing these premises. And you also do nothing to the conclusion. The conclusion stays the same. All you do is you just insert extra sentences as more premises. And the thing that I want you to consider is, what if we augment an argument? Can we ever take an argument that actually is valid now and augment it so that it becomes invalid? Like, consider this, argu this Socrates argument. If I have these premises and this conclusion, if I ever add more premises, could I ever make the argument invalid? Okay, I actually want you to think about it. So pause your videos and try to think of any possible way you could make this argument invalid. All right, All right. I mean any possible way you can make the argument invalid by augmentation. The answer is you can't do it. So what's interesting about this concept of validity is it's like a tipping point. If you ever get an argument with enough information in the premises that the conclusion must be true, then you can never undo that by augmenting it with more art, with more premises. See, think about um, if I give you the other premise like Joe is human. Well, just because we have more people who, who are human, if premises wanted to guarantee that Socrates is mortal, nothing else we could say is going to take that away. We've already got enough structure in these things to guarantee that Socrates is mortal. Or think about those other weird cases of validity. What if I give you a circular argument and that's why the argument is valid? Could I ever make that invalid by augmenting it? Well, no, because if those premises are true, then the conclusion still has to be true because the conclusion is one of those premises, regardless of whether you augment it with additional premises. Or wonder, what if, uh, or here's one other way to think about it. Sometimes you might think, well, what if I add the opposite of my conclusion in here? Like the best way to maybe make this invalid is to say all humans are mortal, Socrates is human, and Socrates is not mortal. Socrates is, is immortal. What if I added that as a new premise? Well, that still doesn't make the argument invalid. Why? Because now I have contradictory premises. If these two premises entail the conclusion is true, adding the negation of the conclusion as another premise doesn't undo that fact. It just means that I'm now going to have a bunch of premises which contradict each other. And that's one of those weird cases of validity. So there's still no way to make an argument uh, invalid once uh, by augmentation, once it's already valid. So if you understand this fact about validity, I think it really illuminates how the structure of validity works. Once you've got that kind of structure, you can never undo it with augmentation. Adding things can never undo it. All you can do is make the argument invalid by taking something away. If I change these premises, then I could make it invalid. I just have to delete one of these premises and it's no longer valid. Or if I change my conclusion, the argument might be invalid. But what I cannot do is just add information. That's how deductive validity, this 100% guarantee works. I think it's illuminating. I know I said at the beginning that we're not gonna focus on, on inductive logic, on probabilistic logic, but it's really illuminating to contrast deductive validity with inductive logic here because inductive confirmation or inductive probability is not preserved under augmentation. And I think this is um, a really helpful fact. This is in enlightening to think about. Like, here's an argument that's not deductively valid. Let's say I tell you it's December in Minnesota, so Lake Wobegon is frozen. Uh, I'm just presuming the background knowledge that Lake Wobegon is in Minnesota. Let's assume we, we all know that. Now, this is an inductively good argument because I don't know if you've ever been to Minnesota in the winter, but it's freezing cold and the lakes all freeze. It, there's so much ice fishing going on in Minnesota. People drive their one ton trucks onto the ice. It's so thick in order to build sheds and do ice fishing. So the lakes freeze deeply. Lake Wobegon freezes every single winter. So this is a very good inductive argument. This is highly likely, highly um, well confirmed. But that doesn't mean that I can't make decrease the confirmation by adding more information. Because uh, think about this, what if I tell you now, it's the warmest winter in the history of recorded um, meteorology. It's never been this warm. Now, is it so sure that, that it's gonna be frozen? Maybe eventually Lake Wobegon will be frozen by January or February. But if it's early December, then maybe it's not frozen yet uh, because it's so unseasonably warm. 
So even though my original argument, this is highly likely, I add more information and the likelihood decreases radically. In fact, it might become unlikely now and the confirmation is lost. No longer is my original evidence a good evidence, um, a good scientific theory, for example, um, entailing or suggesting that the lake would be frozen. So I can undo inductive confirmation just by adding more, not, and I don't have to take stuff away. So that's, this really illustrates how deductive validity is so different than inductive confirmation. Okay, the funny thing about inductive confirmation too is if I could take it away by adding more, I can actually add more and give it back. Like, even if I tell you it's the warmest winter on record, maybe it's also true that all of that warmth that messed up the, the records came later in the season, it came in February and March. So really December was totally typical. And again, that makes it likely that the lake is, is frozen over in December. So the funny thing about inductive confirmation is you can just make it flip flop back and forth by just augmenting it, by adding more and more information. Whereas uh, deductive validity is not like this at all. Once you've got deductive validity, you can never undo it by just adding more information. You can only undo it by taking information away or changing the conclusion. Okay, so the point of this video is to understand how the augmentation principle works. And the point of that, the augmentation principle is to give you a deeper and better understanding of how validity goes. Okay, thanks.